The only thing you need to start selling on Poshmark is your phone. And this five part video is going to show you how. Part one is going to be an overview of the Poshmark app and the seller tools that are there. We're going to go over the entire listing process in part two, from taking pictures to creating titles and descriptions for your listings. Part three is all about making sales and the two things you need to be doing every day to make that happen. In part four, we'll be talking all about shipping like packing orders getting your shipping label with or without a printer and the many options you have to send the package to your buyer part five is all about getting paid i'll show you where to see your earnings for sales you make and how to transfer it to your bank if you're going to be a Poshmark reseller, you are going to be using the app a whole lot. So you are going to have to know how to use it and where to find all of the tools that we're going to talk about in the rest of the video. If you have the app, go ahead and open it up so that you can follow along as I show you around. If you are completely new to Poshmark and you don't even have the app yet, go ahead and download it first. It's free on any app store. You'll just have to sign up and create your account with any email and if you want a $10 shopping credit to buy anything you want on Poshmark go ahead and use my referral code Sandra's Fifth Avenue if you do use that code I will also get a $10 shopping credit so thank you to anyone who does everything you need to buy and sell on Poshmark can be found in these bottom five tabs on the app we have feed shop sell news and then the at symbol with your username we're going to go over all of this. Let's go ahead and start with the feed tab. The feed is pretty much going to be a collection of listings and post shows that are personalized to you specifically. What you see in the feed tab is going to depend on the type of listings you've liked in the past, the people you follow, and the brands you follow as well. I think Poshmark intended for this tab to be somewhere where people would go browse around and shop, but I never use it for that. That when I'm looking for something to buy on Poshmark I always use the search bar at the top to look for something specific and as far as selling tools there aren't any in this tab this is the only place on the app that's pretty much useless to me I never use it now this next tab the shop tab I do use more often but I don't use it for what it's meant for even though it's labeled shop I use it to research trends and to find out what's selling on Poshmark Poshmark is very smart they're always on the lookout for what's trending and what's popular at the moment and that is the type of information they use to frequently update the shop tab to show people things that they're more likely to buy so that's why even though it is the shopping section of Poshmark I like to use it more like a research tool throughout this video I am going to be mentioning some of my other videos that are going to go in depth in some of the topics that I'm talking about this one right here is the first video I will be recommending and that is how I research fashion trends brands and styles to sell on Poshmark that video will show you exactly how I use this shop tab to do that research that video and all of the other ones that I mentioned going forward will be linked in the description down below moving on to the next tab which is that camera icon that says sell here's where you will go to upload the photos of anything you want to sell on Poshmark but we are going to come back to that part later when we're going over the listing process the next tab is the notifications tab that little bell right there is where you will be informed about all the activity going on with your account by default it is set to all notifications so if it can get a bit cluttered which is why I like to scroll at the top instead and choose the specific type of notification I want to see and usually the only reasons I come here are for comments offers and likes those are the only notifications that I like to monitor throughout the day and the last tab on this far right we have the at symbol with your username right beside it if you tap on that it'll either take you to your shop which is also known as your Poshmark clock 
closet or it'll take you to this very long menu where you can find all sorts of information about the items you're selling and also things you've purchased on Poshmark in the past. Where it takes you is going to depend on where you were last time you were using this tab. If you were looking through your Poshmark closet, that's where it's going to take you. If you were doing something in this menu, then it's going to take you here. Next time you click on this at username tab, if you end up in your closet like this, but you want to go to the menu, all you have to do is click that username tab again, and it'll take you there. If you end up in the menu, but you actually want to go do something in your closet, then just select my closet from the menu list, and it'll take you there. First, I'm going to show you a few things on this closet page, and then we'll go back to that menu so I can show you at least the most important stuff, like the selling tools that we're going to be talking about later. Here on this closet page, starting at the top, we have a profile picture, and then in the back, you can add a custom background. We also have an about button right next to the profile picture. Here's where people can go to learn more about you when they land on your Poshmark closet. To edit all of this information, all you have to do is tap the button right next to about that says edit profile. Here you can go to edit your profile photos. You can add a custom name. You can add your location and you can even add a website that people can click on your Poshmark closet. Going back to the closet. Next we have some social stats. Here you can see the listings you have. These are all of your listings you've ever posted, whether they are sold or unsold. And then the next set of numbers are your shares and your follows. Poshmark really does push the social aspect of their app a lot. And that scared me at first when I joined Poshmark because I'm not really a big social media kind of person. I don't like the idea of being attached to my phone checking an app all day but as it turns out you don't really need a big following or lots of shares on Poshmark in order to make sales. The numbers you see on my account are large because for one I use an automation tool to do all of the following and sharing and for two I've been on Poshmark since 2018 so these numbers have grown slowly over time. So do not worry about sharing other people's listings or following people back. As a beginner, your main focus should be on learning and implementing the selling fundamentals and you can worry about all of that social stuff later. One more thing to note from this closet page is that tools icon towards the top right. If you tap on that, it is going to take you to a seller's tools menu. From this menu, there are lots of things you can do, but the main thing that I use from this right here is under bulk listing actions that share to followers that is what I use on the daily basis that is one thing you're going to be doing a lot as a Poshmark reseller is sharing your listings not other people's listings but your own and this bulk action right here is the fastest way to do it if you're using the app but we'll save this demo for the making sales part later on in the video for now let's get back to the menu by tapping this at username tab at the bottom right. It would take me a very long time to go through everything available in this very long menu. So instead, I'm just going to go over the things that I use the most as a seller. And the first one is that my closet option, which is where we just came from and I use it to do all of the things I just showed you. The other thing I use a lot is the my sales option, which is right here. If you tap on that you will see a list of all of the sales you've recently made on Poshmark. If you tap on one of them it is going to take you to the order page where you can see all of the details and information regarding each of the sales. Tapping on that username again to go back to the menu. The last thing I use a lot here is my balance and here's where I go a few times a week to transfer my earnings from Poshmark to my bank account. We're going to go over exactly 
exactly how all of this works in part five of the video. For now, let's move on to part two, which is list your items. Here is what my photo setup looks like. I have a desk right here that is covered by some light gray contact paper that I bought on Amazon. It's like a sticker. I just threw it over this whole desk. This light gray contact paper along with my white wall create an all around neutral color background. Which is what I recommend. A light colored clutter free backdrop for your Poshmark pictures and I have two large newer ring lights newer is the brand name of these lights I have one on each side of this desk to illuminate my item nice and bright and as far as my phone setup, the most important thing is to have a one by one setting. Right here at the top, it says nine by 16. That is not what we want. We want a square mode, which would be the one by one. This will upload pictures in a square format so that they show up right and not cropped all weird. The next thing is that I have my grid lines enabled, which are these faint white lines all across this square. This will help me take nice centered photos and the only other thing is that I always make sure to give the lens a good wipe so that I'm getting the best picture possible. The first photo I take of the item is always the cover photo. After that just take pictures of your item from all angles. Take an up close of any cool details. Take a picture of the size tags in material and care tags too and also add measurements if you can. Those are really important to make a sale. And if the item has any flaws whether big or small that you definitely want to photograph. You can upload up to 16 pictures on Poshmark. Usually I can capture everything I need to show about an item in about 12 pictures. When I'm done taking pictures of an item I do add it into a poly bag and add a SKU number so that it's easy to find when it sells. Once you do get to about 70 to 100 items in your shop you are going to have to start creating a SKU system like this one to keep track of your growing inventory. Once you are at that point, you can go watch my organize your inventory video to get an idea of how to do that. Now we're ready for the next step in part two, which is to upload your photos and create your listing on Poshmark. Go ahead and open up the Poshmark app and select that camera icon. To start uploading your photos, go ahead and click that portrait looking icon towards the bottom left. This is going to pull up all of your most recent photos that are on your phone. You can go here and just start selecting all of the photos you want to upload. And when you're done, just click the add button on the bottom right. But what I like to do instead is click those three dots towards the top, select browse. And this is going to bring us to a page where we have a lot more options as to how we want to sort our photos before we upload them to Poshmark. For First thing I want to do is see the folders that I have on my phone. So I'm going to tap the three lines on the top left and click on images. Now it's going to show me all of the photos that I have into folders on my phone. And these are folders that I created previously just to keep my Poshmark pictures separate from my personal pictures. When I'm listing on Poshmark, that just keeps things organized and makes everything a lot more easier for me. I'm going to select the Poshmark folder and the last thing I want to do to sort these pictures the right way is sort them from A to Z. To do that, we're going to tap on the three dots towards the top right, select sort by and select A to Z. Now these photos are sorted by the first that I took and then it ends with the last pictures I took, which is the way that I want to upload them to Poshmark. From here, all I have to do is start selecting my photos. So just tap and hold until you see the check mark and go ahead and tap all of the photos you want to upload to Poshmark and it's going to upload them for me in this order so I don't have to worry about about rearranging them later. When you're done selecting your photos, 
click select at the top right next Poshmark is going to ask you if you want to crop your photos to crop them all you have to do is pinch and zoom in and you can tap and hold the picture to move it around until it's at the perfect position in which you want it go ahead and scroll through tap on any pictures that need cropping and then when you're done with the cropping you can click that next option at the top right next Poshmark is asking you which of these photos do you want to be your cover photo which is the one buyers will see on the listing page all over Poshmark it's the first thing they will see so go ahead and select which one you want mine is already selected I'm going to tap next again then Poshmark gives you the option to add filters to your cover photo so you can scroll through here and choose one that you like or if you want to keep the original scroll back select original and you can always adjust the photo in instead by tapping the adjust tab at the bottom right hand side you can adjust the brightness the contrast you can add some sharpness to your photo when you're done editing your photo go ahead and click next and that will bring you to the listing page starting with the photos at the top you can click on any of them if you want to edit them some more at the bottom you see a pencil icon if you tap on that it will give you the same options as before which is the filter and the adjust so go ahead and edit any of the photos that you need to here on your listing you can also rearrange these photos by tapping and holding one and moving it to a different position I uploaded my photos how I want them so they're all in good order for me the next section is title right here where it says what are you selling what most new sellers do here is add a nice sounding title they add things such as sparkly shoes stunning heels or something simple like prom dress but those kind of titles are not going to lead to many sales what is going to lead to sales is writing out a title that has lots of words that potential buyers are likely to use in the search bar when they're looking for something to buy. Here's the title I put for these shoes. Clark's Mule Shoes 6.5 Burgundy Red Leather Slip-On Comfort Business Casual Clogs. And that's pretty much what I do for most of my titles. I will start with the brand name and then I state plainly what the item is. Then I will talk about the size and the color Color. and towards the end depending on how many characters are left over I will end with related keywords and synonyms that describe the item you have up to 80 characters in that title field you don't have to necessarily use all of them but use as many as you can to describe your item in as many ways as you can because titles like that are more likely to show up for more buyers who are using the search bar to find something to by learning how to craft and type out descriptive titles and descriptions that are filled with keywords that potential buyers will use in the search bar is a very important skill to learn so I really do recommend you go check out this video right here it is my keywords video where I share how to find these keywords and where to put them in your titles and descriptions moving on to the next section where it says tell shoppers about your listing Go ahead and tap on that and this is where you're going to type out a description for your item. What I see here that most new sellers do is add random things like this is so pretty I only wore it three times or it doesn't fit me anymore so that's why I'm selling it and again descriptions like that are not going to help you sell this item. Just like titles the description part of your listing is yet another opportunity to add some details and some keywords that are going to help the item pop up not just on Poshmark but on other search engines like Google as well. I use listing templates to create my listings on Poshmark but I save all of those templates on a software in my computer but since this is a phone tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create listing templates on your phone. This right here is called the Textpand app. It is a text expander app. You can just type in that into your 
your app store and find all sorts of versions of apps like this one. Basically what you do is use these kind of apps to save long text that you anticipate typing again and again. For this particular app, in order to create a template, all you have to do is tap on the pencil icon and click on phrase. At the very top, you're going to add a shortcut and then below is where you would type in your long phrase that you want to be attached to this shortcut. I'm going to click the back button and click into this mule template that I've created in the past. Slash mule is going to be a shortcut that will trigger the longer text to be typed anywhere I use it on my phone. So let's go back to Poshmark so I can show you how it works. I'm going to type in slash mule and there is my template. I'm just going to tap on it so that it can type it all out for me. And all I have to do is go in here and fill in the blanks that are on this template which are indicated by the dashes in front of words. Those are just placeholders so I'm going to go in and fill in all of the missing information here. And that right there is my description done. It's clean, it's detailed, and it answers any sort of questions that the buyer may have. I have a listing template like this for all the types of shoes that I sell. If you're type A like me, then you get it. But if you're not, I understand that you probably feel like that is overkill, but you don't have to do it like this. You can just have one general template for all of the listings you're going to be doing on Poshmark and you can make your templates a lot shorter as well. Using the shortcuts is going to save you time either way. And if you want some ideas as to what kind of information to add into your templates, go ahead and watch my templates video right here. Okay, let's go ahead and tap done on this description and move on to the next order of business, which is your category. This right here is pretty simple. You're going to select your primary category, which for this is women's and then shoes. And then you're going to select a secondary category, which for these is going to be mules and clogs. Click done when you're done selecting. And most of the time it is going to be that straightforward and simple. You're going to be able to find what you're listing on this Poshmark category list. But sometimes you may not find the exact category that matches the item you're listing. When that happens, you have to just do your best and find the one that best matches. And when the case is that you have different categories that the item can go into, like heeled sandals, for example, those can go into sandals or they can also be labeled as heels. When that happens, just choose one and you can always go back and change it. If after a few months you don't see that much activity on the listing, you're not seeing that many likes or no one's sending you any offers on it, you can go back in and change it to the other category instead. So this category is not set in stone. You can always change it. Just choose the one that best applies for now. The next field we have to fill out is quantity. For most of us, we are just going to be selling one of the type of thing we're listing. If you're selling wholesale, maybe you have multiple. But for most of us, as I said, we're just selling one. So I'm going to select that. Then we have to tell Poshmark what size is this thing we're listing. So go ahead and choose your size. And if the size is not here, you can always add a custom size by selecting that tab. And then you can fill out the information there and tap next. The next two are brand and color. Both of these are optional, but if you know them and you can fill it out, go ahead and do so because this will help Poshmark know exactly where to put your item in all the different places on the Poshmark app to help buyers find them. So go ahead and fill in your brand and choose the two colors that best match your item. Next, we have the new with tags question and it is pretty simple and straightforward here. Does your item have tags or not. One time I was searching for pants to buy for my son on Poshmark. I put it into the search bar. I selected the new with tags filter. I saw some that I liked and so I bought them. When I got them delivered to my home, I saw that they did not look new with tags and they did not have the tags attached. The dude said that even though the pants did not have the tags, they were new so that's why he listed them as new with tags. But in my opinion, he should not have selected that if they did not have the tags attached. So please don't do that. Only select yes if the item in fact
contract does have the tags and if it doesn't go ahead and select no if you select yes the next question Poshmark wants to know is is this a boutique item boutique is only if you've signed up for one on Poshmark and if you're selling items wholesale if you're selling them for the first time ever they've never been for sale at any store anywhere that is a boutique and you have to sign up for that so for most of us we're just gonna leave that unchecked so go ahead and click done when you're done selecting your answer to the new with tags question and we can move on to the next part which is style tags these are basically keywords Poshmark wants you to enter three words that describe your item you can click there and you can search through this long list that Poshmark has or if you want you can also type in your own right here now we get to the next part which is the pricing section the first thing Poshmark is asking is what is the original price of this item what did it cost retail brand new at the store what I recommend you do here is add that price if you know it estimate the price if you can or just add a zero if you have no idea what I don't recommend you do is waste your time hunting down this original price because it's not that serious and you're not going to get in trouble for putting in the wrong thing so just do either of those three things I mentioned and move on the real important part of this pricing section is what you want your item to be priced at when you list it on Poshmark which is this next section right here pricing is really a convoluted topic there are many things that go into pricing an item and all resellers have their own way of doing it in the future I will create an in-depth video on pricing because it really does require lots of time to explain all the nuanced things that go into it for now there are three things I want to tell you about pricing number one is that you always want to price your item higher than what you expect to get for it not a lot higher but by a little bit just to make room for discounts and offers because it is rare when an item sells full price on Poshmark 95% of the time in my experience items will sell via offers number two don't do what I did in the beginning and overthink your pricing just do a little bit of research come up with the best price possible and just go with it like most of the other things this is changeable so if you don't see any activity no likes no offers after a few weeks you can go back in and lower your price and the third thing is that for beginners there is a tool that you can use to help you out with pricing and it is that suggested price option that's right below the listing price if you tap on that Poshmark is going to show you some of the most recently sold items that are very similar to what you're currently listing so just scroll through all of these listings and come up with an average sold price just remember like I said earlier you want to list a little bit higher than that so if you determine that the average sold price of the item from the options that Poshmark is showing you is about $25 then maybe you want to list it for like $32 to $34 once you input your price you're going to see towards the bottom where it says your earnings this would be your take-home pay if this item were to sell at this price point you put the take-home pay is less than your sold price because Poshmark does have selling fees for anything above $15 that you sell Poshmark will keep 20% of the final sold price and they will give you the rest but those earnings will go down even further if you decide to give your buyer a shipping discount which is this middle part right here by default on Poshmark the buyer will always pay shipping and as of the making of this video that shipping cost is seven dollars and ninety seven cents but you as the seller do have the option to give the buyers a shipping discount and that is what this is asking you right here what shipping price do you want the buyer to pay if you select 595 then that's what the buyer will pay and you will be responsible for paying the rest which is two 
202 as it says towards the bottom right here. 595 and 202 equals the 797 that Poshmark needs in order to send you that label. If you click apply, you will see that your earnings went down even further. And if we go back to that shipping discount section and select the next discount, which is 499, now the buyer will pay that and you will be responsible for paying 298. And if you click apply, again, your earnings went down even further. And if you were to select free shipping, meaning the buyer will pay zero, then you will be responsible for paying the whole thing, the whole $7.97. All of that would come out of your earnings. But since the shipping discount is optional, I just always leave it at no discount. And I do send shipping discounts, but I do it later on in the process and we'll get to that later. There are just two more things I want you to know about here on the listing page because I think you'll find them very helpful. The first thing is the additional details. If you tap on that, it's going to open up some more fields. These right here are for private use only. The customers will not see any information you put here. What I use this for is the listing SKU. I like to add a SKU number right there so that I know exactly where to find my item once it sells. It is going to show me the SKU number on the order page so it'll be super easy to find. The next thing I want you to know about is that if you click the back button on your phone it is going to ask you if you'd like to save this item as a draft. So if you're working on a listing but you're not completely done with it but you can't finish it at the moment you can always save it for later so that you can come back to it. Let me just show you how to come back to your draft so you know in the future where to find them. Go ahead and tap on save draft. From this page you're going to click on sell as if you're about to upload photos and towards the top you can see the drafts option. Select the item you want to finish listing. Go ahead and fill in the rest of the things and then once you are ready to list your item tap on next and list and now your item will be officially up for sale on the Poshmark platform. I know all of this must sound like a lot of work to anyone new to reselling but you will get faster over time because you do start to build muscle memory. Over time your fingers will just know what to tap where and you'll be able to get all of these listings up faster and faster the more you do it. Now I don't want you to have done all of that hard work for nothing which is what will happen if you just let your listings sit there. In order to make sales you must be proactive by doing two very important things and that is sharing and sending offers. Let's go ahead and start with the sharing part. Back to the Poshmark app. Head to your closet by clicking the at username and then my closet. Here you will see your listings and below your listings there are three three options you can choose. We're going to select that square that has arrows going around it. And when you do that, it will give you all of your sharing options. You can share this listing to a specific person on Poshmark. You can share it via email, via message, and to all sorts of social media sites. When I talk about sharing your items on Poshmark, I'm only referring to the very first option at the top that says my followers. So go ahead and tap that and you've just shared your item on Poshmark. When you tap share and then my followers, it's going to do two things for you. The first is it's going to send your listing to all of your followers feeds, which is that bottom left option that we talked about earlier. And some people may see your item on their feed, but many won't because as I mentioned earlier, I believe most shoppers find their items using the search bar. And that's the second thing that sharing your items to your followers is going to do. It's going to bump your listing up in the search results. So let's say I was searching for some red baby Nike sneakers. The results that Poshmark shows me right here are because for one, these people are using words in their titles or in their descriptions that match the words that I use to search these shoes up. The second reason Poshmark is showing me these particular listings is because they shared their items most recently. The first listing right here 
shared her item first most recent the second item is the person who shared their item second most recent the third shared her item third most recent and on and on so if you don't share your items in a very long time they're going to end up way down in the page where it's going to be harder for buyers to find via search that's why it's very important to share all of your items lots of times throughout a day and if you have just a handful of listings it is pretty simple to go to your closet and share each one one by one but once you get to hundreds of listings that is going to get very time consuming and that is when you want to start using the Poshmark bulk sharer and that's where that tools menu icon from earlier comes into play go ahead and go to your Poshmark closet on the app and before we start bulk sharing the first thing we want to do is set a couple of filters on our closet to tell Poshmark which items to share and in what order. First filter you're going to set by clicking on that cone looking icon. At the very top it says sort and just shared. We want to switch this to just in instead. The next filter going back to that cone icon, it's going to be all the way at the very bottom of this list where it says availability instead of all. I'm going to switch it to available items. That way Poshmark doesn't share any of my items that are already sold. I only want Poshmark to share those items that are available for sale. Now that we have those two filters set, we can go to the bulk sharing option which remember it's by clicking that tools icon towards the top right in the bottom section where it says bulk listing actions that is where you will tap on share to followers go ahead and select all at the top if you tap on share to followers right now it's only going to share your listings that are at the very top so what you want to do here is scroll all the way to the very bottom of your closet to load all of your listings once you get to the bottom it will show you at the top how many listings are selected if all of your listings are selected go ahead and click on share to followers and Poshmark will proceed to share all of your listings on autopilot you do have to leave your phone open on this page until it's completely done but you can set your phone down and move on to do other things while Poshmark shares your entire closet if you have good titles and descriptions and you're sharing your items enough you are going to start Start seeing some activity in your closet one of the things you'll see is offers from interested buyers another thing you'll start to see is likes on your items and that is great that is exactly what you want to see because those two things is what is going to lead to sales with offers you receive it's up to you whether you want to accept the offer counter or decline it but if someone likes your item then it's up to you to send out these offers in order to make these sales let me show you how this works back on the app you're going to select that bell icon where all your notifications are at the top from the menu you're going to select likes go ahead and tap the like to which you want to send an offer I'm going to select the very first one at the very bottom there is a blue button that says offer slash price drop go ahead and tap on that the one we're going to use is the very first one that says offers to likers private this option means that this offer is going to go out to new likers they can choose to accept this offer or not but the price is going to remain the same on Poshmark the other option right below it that says public that means that you're going to drop the price of your item publicly and anyone who has liked the item will receive a notification of that price drop but the price of your item is going to remain at that that reduced price publicly on Poshmark whether any of those likers who were notified buy or not. Since I want the price of my item to remain the same after sending out this offer I'm going to click on the private option. At the top you're going to input your offer you can put a custom one or you can select that little calculator in order to do a percentage off. I'm going to do 20% off, tap on apply offer, and with offers that you're sending to likers, Poshmark does require you to add a shipping discount. So that is the next field we're going to fill out. Go ahead and choose one of these that works best for you. I always go with the 595 option and the shipping discounts will work exactly the 
the same as I showed you earlier in the listing part. It is going to come out of your earnings. Right below there, it will tell you what the earnings will be after Poshmark fees and after that shipping discount. If all of that looks good to you, then go ahead and click submit. Like sharing, sending offers to likers is something that you're going to want to do multiple times a day. If you have your notifications turned on on the Poshmark app, then you'll get notified when someone likes your item and you can send out your offer right then and there. But if you're like me and you have your notifications turned off, then you will have to come back to the Poshmark app a few times a day, click on likes and just send out your offers one by one to the most recently liked items. When you share and send your offers out consistently, eventually you are going to start seeing those sales come in. And when you do make a sale, three things are going to happen. One is that you're going to receive an email notification to the email you use to create your account. That email will have all of the details about the sale and at the very bottom it will have your shipping label attached. The second thing that's going to happen is that you're going to receive a notification on the app. It's going to look like a green cash symbol and you can tap into that notification to see all of the details about the order. You can see a breakdown of your final earnings. You can even message the buyer maybe thanking them for purchasing and you can also select this problem slash order inquiry section right here and it will lead you to a list of possible issues you may run into with this order. Go ahead and select the one that applies to you and Poshmark will give you further instructions on how to proceed with the issue. The third thing that's going to happen is that your funds will be added to your balance. Remember you can see your balance by clicking on the at username tab at the bottom right. Click on it again to get to the menu and scroll down to where it says my balance. All of the money you make from your sales will go to that pending portion of this balance. You can withdraw this money once it moves down to the redeemable portion of it. And in order for it to move down to redeemable, you have to do four things. The first thing is you have to pack your order. You have to print your label. You have to send your item to the buyer and when the buyer receives it you have to wait up to three days and of course I'm going to explain all of those things to you let's start with that very first one packing your order Poshmark and USPS partnered together to create something that is only available on Poshmark called Posh Post with Posh Post you can use any priority mail packaging to send your orders so that is any envelope or box that is red and white like this that says United States Postal Service and priority mail on it. Any of that sort of packaging you can use. And the great thing about this packaging material is that it is free on the USPS website. I will leave the direct link to that in the description of this video. But if you cannot wait for USPS to ship out your boxes and envelopes, you can always go to a USPS. USPS office instead and grab some packing material there for free as well. Most of the time they have a little display near the entrance with all sorts of packing material for you to just grab and go. You don't have to pay for it or tell them anything. Just choose what you need and you can walk right out. Another option you have is to use your own packing material, your own boxes or poly mailers that you have around your home from previous orders. Like this Amazon box will work out just fine. All you have to do is make sure to take off any previous labels or mark off with a sharpie any SKUs or any numbers from the previous order just so that the USPS workers don't get confused. Once you do have the perfect size box or envelope to put your item in, the next thing is to print your label or to download your QR code if you don't have a printer. First I'm going to tell you all about printers and which ones to use and then we're going to go on to download that QR code. When it comes to printing your label you do have a few options. The first option you have is just a regular paper printer like this one. They must be like 50 to 60 bucks at any office max or staples or any kind of office store like that. As long as you have your phone and the printer connected to the same Wi-Fi it should be a pretty simple process to get your label sent over from your phone to the printer. 
since these labels are printing on regular paper, you are going to have to use some scissors to cut around the label and then use some tape to put it on your box. The next option you have to print your labels with your phone are Bluetooth or Wi-Fi label printers like this one. This one here is a Bluetooth printer, so it's very easy to connected to your phone via Bluetooth. These do use thermal paper, so they will print as a sticker, and all you have to do is peel the back and adhere the label to your box or to your envelope. I will leave the Amazon link in the description to this Munbin Bluetooth label printer that I use. Now let me show you how to get your shipping label or download a QR code. Like I mentioned earlier, when you do make a sale, you will get an email letting you know, and you can go down download your shipping label right from there. But right now I'm going to show you how to do it from the app. So we're going to go ahead and tap the at symbol with your username. Go ahead and tap it again to get to the menu and go down to my sales. From here you're going to select the order you want to ship right now. I'm going to select that very first one. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll be able to do several things from this page. One thing you can do is upgrade your shipping label. The shipping label and QR code that Poshmark initially sends you is only good for items and packages that are up to five pounds. Once you go above five pounds, you do have to upgrade your shipping label and pay extra in order for that label to be good for a heavier weight. So if you're selling lightweight items, you're always going to be good with the five pound label Poshmark sends you. But if you're selling bulkier items, it's probably best if you do get a scale. So you can always make sure your packages are below five pounds and when they're not you can go ahead and upgrade the label the other thing you can do here is download that QR code just tap on generate shipping QR code so if you don't have a printer or even if you just want USPS to print your labels instead you can do this and then click generate QR code again and then Poshmark will email you this QR code and all you have to do is show this to the post a worker when you get there and they will print the label for you and the third thing you can do here which is what we're actually here for is to download your shipping label that option is the very last one on this page so go ahead and tap on that go ahead and select download again and then your device is most likely going to ask you where do you want to send the shipping label I'm going to select my Munbin printer and from here all I have to do is tap on preview and print the option you want to select is the 3.9 by 5.9 inches at least that's what Munbin says right here but you may see it as a 4 by 6 label if you're printing via a thermal printer that's the size you want to go with next I'm going to click on the Bluetooth option so that I can connect the printer select my Bluetooth printer click on X to shut this window and then I can just tap on print just to clarify the label you are using is prepaid whether it's the thermal printed label the paper one or the QR code it was already paid for on Poshmark by the buyer or by you and the buyer if you decided to give a shipping discount so there is nothing you have to pay or do from this point forward other than get that package to USPS and you have four different options to do that the first option is to drop it off at a USPS office and if you have have a QR code this is probably going to be your only option you will have to go in there so that they can print your label the second thing is that you can put it in your mailbox if the package fits there you can just put it there and they will pick it up when they drop off your mail the third thing you can do is drop it off at one of those blue drop boxes the opening is pretty small so larger boxes won't fit there but if you have envelopes or those thinner boxes you can just put it in those drop boxes and the next thing you can do is actually schedule a pickup once you start having lots of orders this is probably going to be the easiest thing to do you can schedule a pickup one day in advance and then the USPS worker will come to your front porch and pick up all of the packages you have left out for them once USPS gets your package via either of those four ways they will scan it and it will officially enter the USPS ecosystem 
them. You and the buyer will be notified on Poshmark all along the way. As soon as it starts tracking, you will know. And as soon as it's delivered to the buyer's address, both of you will know as well. And it's at that point when the package is delivered to the buyer that Poshmark's three day policy will start. That policy states that the buyer has three days to open up the package, inspect it, accept it, and rate it on Poshmark. If they don't do that within three days, then Poshmark will automatically close the sale and it will be complete. And that is the last thing that needs to happen for your earnings to move from pending down to redeemable so that you can officially get paid and transfer your earnings. On the Poshmark app, that at symbol with your username by now, if you've been watching this whole video, you should know exactly where this is. We're going to go down to my balance and here you will be able to see all of the money that is redeemable. You can tap on that and you have many different options as to where you want to transfer your money. You can do an instant transfer via a debit card. You can do PayPal or Venmo. Those three do have a small fee and right below each one it'll tell you what that is. Or for no fee you can transfer your money to a bank via direct deposit or you can always request a check. I'm going to go with the bank direct deposit. Go ahead and tap on redeem. Usually I receive it within two days. If you want even more guidance on your Poshmark journey, go ahead and watch this video next. It is another in-depth tutorial, but there I do talk in more detail all about the reselling supplies I use and share even more selling tips. Remember, every video, tool, and app I mention will be linked in the description below. If you have questions, I have answers, so leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching this video video and I will see you in the next one.